Hey guys, welcome back. It's time for another quick tech. I've got one of my bases on the bench today. This is a Maiden JB4. This was uh, made right here in Melbourne back in the early 80s, I think. It's a beautiful base. In fact, it's pretty much my favorite base. It has had a few mods and stuff, and maybe I'll talk about those in another video. But I gig with this all the time. But it's got one niggling little problem that's that's been there since I bought it, actually. And that is that someone, somewhere along the line, has filed the slot for the G-string in the, in the nut. They've actually filed it just a little bit too low. The Open G speaks, but it doesn't take a lot of digging in before it gets a bit rattly. If it was any of the other three strings, I would have mended it ages ago. But to be honest, I don't really play Open G very much. I think like most bass players, I kind of hear that note as just about the thinnest and twangiest on any bass guitar. So I don't really play it that much, but um, she's on the bench today, as I mentioned, and she's getting some other TLC and a few servicing points. Uh, so today's the day I'm going to finally mend it. Obviously, when you have a nut that's a little bit low, nut slots that are low, you've got a few options. You can uh, shim the nut. That's a pretty... Uh, pretty common technique where you put some kind of material underneath the nut and raise all of the slots up and then refile them. Obviously another option is to just make a whole new nut. I did that in the Project Barocca series, so check that out if you're interested. Unfortunately I don't have any brass stock that's wide enough, plus it is the original equipment for the base. These actually came out of the factory with a brass nut, so it'd be nice to keep it original. So the final option is to fill the slot and then refile it. Uh, if it was a bone nut, I could do that with just super glue and baking soda. It's an old trick, but it kind of works okay in my experience. Um, since this nut is made of brass, I really, I'm not really sure what sort of adhesive or compound or whatever you can put in there that would actually bond to the brass and, and handle the, the, the string, the weight of the string and plus the string moving back and forward as you're tuning up all the time. Maybe something like JB Weld or one of those uh, sort of epoxy compounds might work. Uh, let me know in the comments if you've tried that on brass in, in a brass nut. Uh, yeah, I, I reckon over time it might just peel off. But um, what I'm going to do instead is more or less a permanent repair. I'm actually going to fill the slot with brazing rod. So this is a um, what's known as silver brazing rod. This guy's actually going to be harder, or at least as hard, maybe harder than the brass itself. And it should just bond and flow into the brass really well. And like I say, be a permanent repair. This particular rod, I think is a 15% silver rod. Uh, it's left over from another project and I've lost the packaging. So I'm actually not entirely sure, but I think it's a 15%. So obviously I'm going to need a fair bit of heat. So I'm going to use my propane torch. I've got this little Bromac. Uh, bromic uh, head on it. I think that's what you call it. I quite like this one because it comes out at 90 degrees and you'll see why that's cool in a sec. Um, and it also, I can swivel it as well to fine tune the angle. And of course, because I'm uh, brazing two slightly dissimilar metals, I'm going to need some flux as well. This is a flux that's specific to silver brazing. Its melting point is 620 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to get the strings off, I'm going to get this nut off, and we'll get into it. So the first thing I want to do is just try and clean the glue off the bottom of this. I'm also going to measure the depth of the slot as it is, or at least the distance down to the bottom of the nut. That's uh, 6.2. And I think I'll do the D string as well because it's kind of borderline. That guy is 6.8. Just going to write those down and you'll see why that is later on. So I'm just going to clean these slots. I want really nice, bright, clean brass to braise to. And finally, I'm just going to put the tiniest amount of flux in those slots. I don't want to smear it everywhere because this controls where the braise actually flows. Very windy outside this afternoon, so I'll put my mask on because I'm doing this indoors and the fumes can be a little bit nasty. Specs and gloves are a no-brainer. The right angle torch means I can rest the nut on that brick there, which is nice because otherwise I'd be holding it with pliers 
in the flame and the pliers of course would suck a lot of heat out of the part and it means both hands are free as well. So while that's coming up to temp I'll just brighten up the end of this rod with some 320 grit paper. I'll just warm up the tip quickly and dip it in the flux so it's all ready to go. I think this rod melts around 650-700C so I need to get the brass to a similar temp. And once it's a kind of dark red maroon color and the fluxed spots look obviously yellow, I'll get the rod back in the flame. It only takes a few seconds and there's a little shiny molten silver ball on the end and I can go ahead and just kind of touch that in the slots and a little bit of the rod will just flow in. So that's really it. It's all over pretty quickly. You could quench this in water. I don't think you get any cracks with this sort of thing, but I just let it cool in its own time, which for brass is actually pretty slow. It does hold on to its heat a bit like copper. So I just left it and did some other stuff for 10 or 15 minutes. So this does look like a bit of a train wreck, but honestly, this black scale will clean up very easily with some wet and dry. I reckon the D string, I pretty much nailed it. It's uh, just filled a little bit and it's stayed within the slot. The G-string, I probably overdid it and it's flowed out slightly, but that'll clean up with a file pretty quickly. That's 600 grit, I think. It's probably a bit coarse. I could have started at 1,000 or 1,200, but you can see how the two metals just sort of merge seamlessly there. It's a lot easier to start these slots and rough them in with a nut in a vise like this, especially with brass, because you can use the full stroke of the file. That's why I measured them in the first place. So I can get them down to within half a millimetre or so, and just finish them up when the nut's back on the base. Well, I couldn't help myself. Brass looks great when you polish it up, so I sanded that with 1200, 2000, and then hit it with some metal polish, and it's all ready to go back in, but even though I scored this build-up of lacquer when I removed it, it is a little bit ragged and chipped out, so I'm just gonna tidy that up, and then we'll uh, glue this in with super glue. <laughs> That's worked really well, it's a great improvement, so I'm pretty happy with that. I ended up just blending that lacquer with some 4 row steel wool, but I noticed that the rest of the headstock was starting to look a little bit milky. I guess the lacquer has just kind of oxidized it a little bit over the years, so I ended up dropping the machine heads and just rubbing it over with some fine cutting compound. So then I just cleaned the bottom face of that nut with some acetone and then glued it in place with four or five drops of super glue. Then it was just a matter of filing those slots to the right depth again. I've also polished the frets, uh, oiled the board, and put a new battery in the preamp, so she's all ready to rock again. So there you go. It's a nice, hard, and permanent repair. It's metal that's blended in with the brass really well, and uh, I'm really happy with it. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.